whatever. Amen. But every time I would worship, I would have my head would shake violently back and forth, like I was saying no. And, wow. and you're saying it was violently shaking back and forth, huh? Violently. And you were saying no, but it was still happening. That's right. Anybody who's listening to this, uh, you know, testimony to this, uh, you know, interview, would that be the Holy Spirit doing that when you're saying no and it, your head's shaking violently back and forth. Is the Holy Spirit really going to do that to you? Okay, praise God. How's it going, everyone? It's your brother Noah. I hope that you guys are doing well. And in this video, you're going to see a testimony, an interview that I did with a sister named Megan. I recently prayed deliverance for Megan right around the time that I was making this uh, first video exposing the new apostolic reformation. So I find it interesting that she testified to me of the negative spiritual uh, consequences and effect of being a part of a movement that is uh, like Heidi Baker. And she even went to one of Heidi Baker's conferences. And then she also received a ministry from people that were of a similar mindset and conduct of Heidi Baker. So I hope you guys really do realize the negative spiritual effects and I'm not just uh, speaking out of thin air when I say these things. There were also people in the comment section of the last video that I made testifying of the negative spiritual effects, almost the exact same things that I mentioned in that video, they testified of in the comment section, and also Sister Megan uh, testifies about in this video. So, uh, you know, I hope you guys realize the uh, not only the dangerous effects firsthand, but also the prolonged dangerous spiritual effects of being a part of a movement like Heidi Baker's. Now, there's some people that will try to defend Heidi Baker and say, well, look at the good works she's done. She started different churches. She helped people over in Africa. But why are you trying to defend her doctrinal error, her lack of spiritual discernment with the good works that she's done? Isn't there going to be a lot of people on the judgment day saying, Lord, Lord, have we not done these things in your name? And then he's going to say, depart from me, you who work iniquity. So the fact that she is helping people over in Africa is by no means a justification for the uh, dangerous things that she is doing spiritually. That is so far from a valid... Uh, you know, prote uh, protection of her ministry, that that's, uh, that's crazy. That's awesome that she's helped out people over in Africa, but that's not a justification for the dangerous spiritual things that she uh, is doing to people today. So I hope this video is, is a blessing to you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and play the testimony now with Sister Megan. So my first question is, uh, what was one of the major difference, or what were some of the major differences that you noticed between what happened at the Heidi Baker and then also the people that you associated with that were operating like her, what were the major differences between that and genuine deliverance? Uh, if I could ask you that question, because there could be some s seemingly similarities with your eyes, right? Like it could kind of look like deliverance is happening, but what was the difference, would you say, between that and what you experienced with the Heidi Baker group of people? Absolutely. What I noticed is when... Once I actually received true deliverance, I I felt I knew that I I noticed that I um, I would cough or or spit up or throw up or yawn or um, then feel a release. Um, right. I did manifest and maybe had had movements, but I knew that there was the moment where something left. Right. And a lot of times in. Um, in these type of settings and at the Heidi Baker conference, there was um, there was like a shaking or I would feel something and someone would call it the Holy Spirit or would say more Lord. And I also felt very confused. Um, and I left there. I left the conference actually feeling very frustrated and I couldn't understand it mm. and I never felt anything leave. So I had okay. like movements and shaking, but, um, yeah. And we know, know that confusion is not of God, right? So with the fact that there's confusion along with the frustration and the negative feelings just does not show that it's good. And like I mentioned in the video that I previously made, you know, there could be shaking or rolling around or movement in the body in both. But what they are saying is that that is the Holy Spirit in you moving around and shaking you and convulsing you and stuff like that. So that's such an important distinction that needs to be made. In their mind, they're, they're not saying that that's the Holy Spirit delivering you. They're saying that that's like the Holy Spirit filling you and moving around in you, right? Yes. And one another big difference I noticed was I, 
um, I felt that the general teaching was you're going to get deliverance and it was a sort of a one-time event. And now once you're free, then you'll receive the Holy spirit. So, um, I just, so I had this understanding that I should, I should be free of all demons or unclean spirits. And then I would receive the Holy spirit. So once I had this manifestation of shaking, I assumed, okay, now I have the Holy Mm. spirit and I'm free. So not only is it dangerous in the fact that, you know, there's deceptive things happening with what's happening internally, but as well too, they're teaching that you don't need deliverance and, you know, after this manifestation has happened, everything's just going to be easy. You don't need any deliverance after that, right? So it's very confusing in that regard as well too, would you say? Yes, very much so. Okay, and, uh, you know, one thing that you mentioned that I found very interesting is that you said when you received genuine deliverance, you had a distinct knowing that things were actively leaving you. And as we've discussed, you have gone through like a lot of improvements since you've been receiving deliverance, would you say? Like you have a, pretty much tons of different things are going better for you, it seems like now. Yes, very much. And I'm learning that repentance is key, which was not emphasized before mm. with the other movement. But now that I understand that sanctification is a process and it also begins with repentance, I can truly feel the Holy Spirit convicting me. And as I am obedient, I I, I feel that growth. I see it physically and feel it. And before it was more about experiencing the Holy Mm. Spirit, but no emphasis on repenting of what I had done and living holy. Yeah. So they put the emphasis merely on a feeling. Now, feelings can be good. You do feel feelings when you feel the Holy Spirit, but they do not put in the fact of the fruit and the growth along with it. So then it can be, uh, you know, easy for deception to creep in when you're merely talking about feeling a feeling, right? Right, right. So anyways, the next question that I wanted to ask you is kind of what we were talking about is what internal feelings did you have when you were with, at the Heidi Baker conference and also with the people that were operating uh, like Heidi Baker, what internal feelings were you having that were like, okay, something's wrong here? Were, were you having like a gut feeling like uh, something's kind of off in this situation? I, I did. So I, I went for the Heidi, ba- the Heidi Baker conference. Um, I went in with this, I, I had this expectation or this, um, I truly wanted to encounter Jesus. I felt like I, I wanted more of whatever he had. But while I was in there, um, it was, I felt very confused. And when I left, I felt extremely frustrated, almost angry. Even the person I was with, I was really short with, and I didn't understand why. Mm. Um, So I just had this like kind of like a storm of emotions inside of me. Um, Okay. And then I I know that you said that there was like chaotic things happening as well, too, like people rolling around the floor on the floor and stuff like that. And just like kind of anything going. Would you say that there was like a gut feeling like this doesn't make sense? Like, why is this happening? What kind of manifestation is that? Like, was that happening as well? Yeah, so while while she was, um, Heidi was doing a sort of a, like a prayer over the entire congregation, I noticed there were people near me that were starting to shake very kind of violently and then like laughing. Um, and then I also, after she prayed, I felt my legs start shaking mm. and I, I did not, it wasn't me doing it. Um, and then as... I, I saw other people praying for others and they were on the floor and they were rolling around and very similar to the the guy in the video you shared. And, um, I I, I hear people saying more Lord, more, Mm. um, just like in the video. And then I'm literally stepping over people as I'm leaving. And yeah, just this feeling of uh, very, I was just uncomfortable. Um, but also trying to understand um, as I'm being taught that this is what the Holy Spirit looks like, it just, it, I guess now when I look back, it wasn't adding up in my mind. Mm. 
And yeah. that confusion, yeah, confusion and was really frustrated. And that's an important point that you bring up because when deliverance does happen, there can be like people's legs shaking. There can be laughter and things of, of that nature happening. But they are not saying that this is deliverance happening. They're saying that this is the Holy Spirit that is moving around in you. And we know that the Holy Spirit gives you self-control. We know that the yoke of Jesus Christ is light, right? So... It, it really doesn't make sense. That's such an important distinction that needs to be made in the minds of people because, you know, like you could see deliverance and be like, oh, I've seen these manifestations before. But, you know, it's like I said in the video, they are putting things into people, not taking things out of people. So if you're having manif manifestations where you're like uh, convulsing, shaking around on the floor and stuff is coming into you, some red flags should be going off, right? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yes. So were you pressured into uh, like feeling okay like this? Like, did you have feelings of like, I feel off about this, but I don't want to say anything or like, uh, you know, where there's some discernment keys going off, but it's like, well, I don't really want to speak up or I'll just kind of let this slide under the rug, even though I'm feeling red flags. Did you say anything to anybody? Like, what's up about this? And they were just kind of like dismissive about it or? Well, not at the conference itself, but shortly after at a, at a meeting of believers that actually introduced me to Heidi Baker, I started asking questions okay. and uh, the answers I received were, um, I wasn't satisfied with. Okay. So I had, um, this was an event shortly after Heidi Baker and I had witnessed a very uh, similar manifestations they were laying on of hands people were falling out on their backs and I was one of them so I had someone lay hands on my forehead and I, I my body went limp I was still conscience conscious but I felt sort of like electricity go through my body mm. and then I felt this laughter from my belly um come out and it was it was almost like a euphoric type sensation mm. um and when when i when i stood back up i asked um people beside me what just happened i said was that the holy spirit they said i think you were slain in the spirit or or maybe you received the holy spirit but no one could mm. give me an exact you know they were just kind of guessing happened. like i'm not really sure but yes and, and that's very dangerous. That. that that shows the lack of discernment going on in these kinds of situations that people really can't articulate what's happening spiritually. So, I mean, how can you have assurance of what's going on, right? Like, just kind of guessing at the situation and whatnot, right? Right. I really wanted to know, and no one could give me an answer. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's very dangerous, not only in that, but the fact that they're ministering like that with, um, you know, that lack of kind of discernment. So, um yeah, that's really too bad. Anyways, the next question that I wanted to ask you is, uh, what is the fruit that resulted out of this kind of situation or in the lives of other people? What kind of fruit happened? Like, were there positive benefits in your life? Did you notice a closer relationship with Jesus? Did you notice more intimacy with the Holy Spirit? Anything like that? Or was it the opposite? Was there negative bad fruit going on in your life and then also in other people that were around in this situation? What would you say with regards to that? At first, I really felt like I was getting closer to the Lord. Okay. Um, and I think one of the most deceptive parts of this or confusing parts is the group really did um, focus on the Word and, and talk about obedience, but... Um, but more emphasis on the experience right. and I was studying the word more and right. I think this is when the Lord started to open my eyes and I started asking questions in that group but in the very beginning I just was looking for more of that experience the uh, very next day from when my when they laid hands on me um I as soon as I started to worship in the morning I laughed for about 30 minutes hmm. and I just wanted to to experience the Holy Spirit more like that. Um, so, yeah, one thing that you mentioned is interesting that there is a euphoric, almost kind of positive type feeling, but we know that the enemy can give, quote unquote, a kind of positive type feeling, right? There is yeah. a, a, a counterfeit type of peace. There is a counterfeit type of 
happiness and joy and things of that nature, right? So that's where discernment comes into this situation that is so key. So, you know, just because you're having a positive euphoric type feeling does not necessarily mean that it's coming from God. All kinds of lost people have positive euphoric feelings when they do different sinful things, but that doesn't mean that it's coming from God, right? So what you really have to do is go off of the fruit um, at the end of the situation. You can't say, well, I had a positive feeling there, but the fruit is negative. Your life's getting worse. You're frustrated and confused and things are okay because, like I mentioned, a positive feeling or experience in that of itself, a euphoric feeling in that of itself is not enough to say that this is good, right? That this is what I should yes. be doing. Mm. And um, that's when confusion really started to increase because I was told that you know, I was prayed for, I had deliverance, and now the Holy Spirit at one point, and I, I, I didn't understand why I started, I was really starting to feel more of a, a battle inside of me, um, and I think at the same time, the Lord was starting to open my eyes up too, so I went through a, a period of a lot of confusion. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see. And if you're getting deliverance, if you're getting closer to God, you should have more clarity. You should have more understanding. Like now, I'm sure that you're having more clarity of mind and able to understand things better that you've been going through deliverance, would you say? Yes, absolutely. Right. So that should be the fruit of what's going on in the situation. And so, it feels more simple now because it's, mm. I mean, it's just easy. Like, I, it, it's, um, I know what the word says and I... I know to repent. I know um, things I've been delivered of, and hmm. it's just clear and simple now. So, it, Amen. Yeah, praise yeah. God. That's great. Um, so one thing that I wanted to mention as well, too, is the fact that they did actually talk about obedience, or maybe they did talk about obedience and repentance. But just because they're professing that does not mean that they have the right doctrine or they have discernment to discern spiritual things, right? A Hebrew Israelite can talk about obedience to Jesus. Uh, you know, a quote-unquote Jehovah's Witness can talk about obedience to Jesus. Or even Joel Osteen can say repentance, but that doesn't mean that they actually have discernment or know what that looks like to walk that out, right? So that's one thing that I want people who are listening to this interview to be aware of. You know, people that are like Heidi Baker or uh, Bethel, they might talk about obedience, but that doesn't mean that they have discernment from God or they have the true doctrine, right? Because you have to see that in a practical sense and not just professing it with the word. So I'm sure you, seeking God with your whole heart, you see them talking about obedience and it's like, okay, awesome, praise God. But that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, it's still quite the right scenario, right? Absolutely. Okay, cool. So um, I guess one of my last questions was looking back, thinking more logically about the situation. Uh, what could you say? Like, you know, because in this situation, you can kind of get wrapped up in the heat of the moment of like, it's emotional, it's a good experience and stuff like that. But now that you're able to kind of remove yourself from the situation, would you say that your view of what has happened in that situation changed? That you're not in that pressured type environment and you're not like, uh, you know, just all confused and everything. Would your view of what happened actually change now that you're not in that emotionally stirred up environment? Yes, it has changed tremendously and to the point that I have a passion to to warn others not to get wrapped up in this because right. it's not just unbiblical, it's dangerous. Yes, because that's so important. I know now, yeah, I know now that they imparted something to me and I'm still seeking deliverance to completely get that gone, but um, a lot has gotten better. Amen. But every time I would worship, I would have my head would shake violently back and forth like I was saying no. And, wow. and you're saying it was violently shaking back and forth. Huh? And you were saying no, but it was still happening. That's right. Would that yes. be the... Anybody who's listening to this, uh, you know, testimony to this, uh, you know, interview, would that be the Holy Spirit doing that? When you're saying no, and... It, your head's shaking violently back and forth. Is the Holy Spirit really going to do that to you? If you think about it with uh, a bit of logic, I think you would say no, right? The Holy right. Spirit's not going to shake your head against your will. And you're saying you were saying no, you even didn't want it to happen, but it was still happening, huh? Yeah. 
Correct. And, and one thing correct. else that I wanted to mention is this is even after the event, right? You're saying this is, these kinds of manifestations continue to happen afterwards. So that shows that this can have a prolonged negative effect, right? Yes. And I've actually had Kundalini, the name called out during deliverance prayer, and that's the exact manifestation that started was that head shaking. Mm. Um, so and I've seen the same with other people as well, too, where they've gone to similar type of uh, kind of conferences or, uh, you know, been a part of similar kind of movements. And then, you know, when they get deliverance, they have similar manifestations. Their head starts shaking. They got stuff around their spine, and stuff like that. Right. So yeah. is that a coincidence that there's a pattern being seen like that <laughs> um, with people that yeah. went to these kinds of uh, conferences? Right. So that's why I just, um, I, I'm still getting all of that um, out of me. So I, um, that's why I'm so passionate about sharing the truth of this, uh, you know, this false doctrine or false right. movement, whatever you call it. Yeah, um, we're not trying to throw jabs at anybody or talk down on anybody, but this is yeah. a dangerous situation. And if you see somebody in a house that's burning down, you know, you're not going to worry about offending them or how you communicate it. You're going to go and grab them out of that house, pull them out of the house right. and say, exactly. you need to get out of here. This is dangerous, right? So yes. Yes. that's our goal in this situation. Um, that's right. Is there anything else that you wanted to say with regards to uh, this or deliverance or? Um, I'm just, just praise God. I'm thankful he opened my eyes to this. And just like you said in your original video that, I was truly seeking the Lord and I was in this movement. So I know that there are people that are trying to yeah, really seeking right, him right. and can get wrapped up in, in false things. So yeah, I'm for sure. Just so, to shine light on the truth. And I'm, yeah. So Amen. Thank you for this. That's a good point as well, too. We're not saying people that are going to these conferences or whatever are not genuinely seeking God. This isn't even an attack against people that have gone to this stuff because I do believe there are genuine children of God wrapped up in this. This is rather a plea of use discernment to see what you're getting yourself wrapped in, uh, wrapped up in so that you can genuinely find the true thing that you're searching for. You can genuinely find the Holy Spirit and find deliverance, right? Yes, absolutely. Amen. Praise God. Well, thank you, uh, Megan, for having this interview. And uh, thank, thank you, everyone, you. for listening. Amen. All right. Thank you.